have to admit, I learned a lot from the Oregon Trail. I learned that there's such a thing called a Mac, and it was wonderful because you could play games on it during class. I learned that sometimes it's better if grandma goes on ahead and kicks the bucket so she won't eat all the food. I learned why buffalo almost became an endangered species because shooting them is so much fun. I had a lot of fun playing Oregon Trail, but it had its shortcomings. For instance, the things I learned from the game had very little to do with Oregon or the trail that went there. And yet, 65 million copies of the Oregon Trail have been distributed to schools, learning centers, and parents who are over eager for their kids to learn about Manifest Destiny. Oregon Trail is heralded as one of the most important educational games ever to exist, but if it didn't teach us what it claimed to, then why did everyone sing its praises? The interesting thing about the Oregon Trail is how it was intended to teach us about history, but would wind up teaching us something even more important than that. The game was designed by American 8th grade school teacher Don Rawish. In 1971, Rawish wanted a computer game to liven up the rather dry historical narratives of pioneers and immigrants heading from Missouri to Oregon City on the trail. So he enlisted two of his buddies from college to help him make it, and the game they came up with was pretty much the Oregon Trail we know and love, except that the prompts were printed out on a roll of paper. And everyone loved it. His eighth grade class loved it. The Minnesota Educational Computing Consortium loved it. They struck a deal with Apple and soon schools around the nation loved it. It was a rousing success. But there was one little problem that no one bothered to consider while fawning over the calamities of broken wagon wheels and snake bites. The Oregon Trail sucked at teaching history. But don't take the word of an admittedly fainient and easily distracted student for it. According to educators Ruth C. Clark and Richard Myers' e-learning and the science of instruction, there are several factors that can foil a well-meaning educational game. One, they are too hard. The difficulty is antagonistic to the pursuit of knowledge. Did anyone ever make it to Oregon? I was always losing all of my stuff because I couldn't resist fording the Big Blue River. Are you the most sound sleeper in the world? How do you steal two giant mammals? Two, they teach more than one subject at once. When it comes to instruction, less is almost always more, again, according to Clark and Meyer. But Oregon Trail was information overkill, whereas in a game like Number Number crunchers, all you did was math. In Oregon Trail, you were learning about the history of the West, but you were also crunching the numbers of how many oxen you needed for the trip and learning how to shoot squirrels with the number pad so that you could eat them. By the way, I think I'll be skipping lunch today. And three, even though I may take umbrage to this, according to standardized educational research, we retain less knowledge when in the act of discovery. This is because having the freedom to hunt or shop or manage the cholera outbreak puts too much cognitive burden on you, so your brain doesn't remember the difference between Fort Walla Walla and Fort Kearney. So we weren't learning nearly as much as we thought we were. We were just playing a video game that, in hindsight, isn't even very good. So if it didn't teach us the American frontier history lesson that it was supposed to, then what did the Oregon Trail teach us? The Oregon Trail taught us the future. In games, the theme does not always equal meaning. Carcassonne isn't about the zoning laws of castles in France. Spelunky says nothing about actual spelunking. And the Oregon Trail isn't about the Oregon Trail, at least not the quality educational parts. As anachronistic as it may seem, driving a covered wagon across the Old West was for many people a formative point of contact with computer science. It taught us to think systematically. The most obvious way it does this is through modeling and simulation. Modeling and simulation is the idea that you can put information into a computer and find out how a system will behave in real life. And ultimately, what Oregon Trail models is the likelihood that a family would survive their journey to Oregon. Scholars estimate around 1 in 17 people died on the trail based on the number of trailside graves. The game gets this really wrong because it's really easy to die. but its heart is in the right place. Rawish adjusted the probabilities based on his own historical research. This meant you could try out alternative possibilities to a historical event. 
And as we've seen, this has become a very big trend. Later, economists would go on to study virtual worlds like EVE Online to predict changes in real world commodities. Doctors can also use models to track the progression of diseases like cancer. Something else the Oregon Trail got right is data visualization. The earliest versions of the game lacked graphics, but by the time it moseyed along onto the Apple II, the screen was populated with mountain vistas and you could literally see the amount of venison meat you'd hauled in on a hunt. Simplistic, yes, but this translated harsh numbers into a graphical format that you could intuitively understand, and all the bright colorful images of settlers and the curious ways you could die made Oregon Trail playful to engage with down to the Lone Ranger. How did you get cholera? I don't even know what that is. It showed us the importance of interfaces that create a losery attitude, which is the mentality people take on when they approach a game. You can see this in everything from your cell phone OS to the dashboard indicators that tell you when you're being an eco-friendly driver to the 3DS title screen, which you can blow into to make it spin like a pinwheel. So Oregon Trail is this amazing early example of how games can be good at teaching us about things like complex systems without necessarily being quote unquote educational and teaching us good old fashioned reading, writing, and arithmetic. Of course, this is to say nothing against games that teach a traditional subject. They can be absolutely great. Metamorphobet is charming as heck at teaching kids the alphabet, and Lemonade Stand is a solid lesson in economics. But usually, when a game goes out of its way to make us learn something, the lesson plan falls flat. For all its admirable qualities, Carmen San Diego didn't help much with world geography, and Math Blaster is neither a good game nor a good abacus. But when games like Europa Universalis and The Incredible Machine and Kerbal Space Program allow us to explore the systems underneath, then we are really learning something. And to think, it all started with a case of dysentery, probably from eating all of those squirrels. Anyway, what do you think? I want to know what games have taught you something besides education, and what did you learn from the Oregon Trail? Hash it out in the comments, and if you like what you saw, please subscribe. I'll see you next week.